No matter how dark things seem to be Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Join us now to hear great and mighty things that have happened in the lives of people who have been changed through our Lord Jesus as they share their testimonies of how God answers prayer. Welcome to God Answers Prayer. I'm Linda Tiano. And I'm so excited to have you join us today to hear another story of how God is answering prayer in the lives of so many. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Yeshua explained, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes next to the Father except through union with me. To know me is to know my Father too. The Hebrew word radaf can mean to follow after, to pursue eagerly, to be continuous. So what does this mean when we speak about hunting? Our guest today heard the Lord speak to their hearts. And one of them, he said, I want you to hunt for me like you hunt for these deer. And I want you to teach my people to do the same. We are delighted to have Chad and James Hampton of Hunt, Hunting the Truth Ministries with us today to share about their program, Twin Factor. Join me as we hear their story. We'll be right back. Pleased to meet you, Brother John. Tell me why, why have you come? Did you come to me alone? Before you get back. On the road, you say a simple kind of prayer. Do you know? How do you know? He's always there. You say a simple. God still cares. I see the choir is almost done. That preacher's waiting there for you. always there 
won't say a simple kind of prayer. Do you know? Nah, do you know? God still cares. Now there's just one way to get home. It's on your knees that you must come. Give your life to the one, the sacrificed living son. And say a simple kind of prayer. How do you know he's always there? Say a simple kind of prayer. Do you know? How do you know God's still there? Welcome back, and we're here with Chad and James Hampton. They are from Hunting the Truth Ministries. Uh, the program that they have is called Twin Factor, and we are delighted to have you two. Welcome to God Answers Prayer. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Thank you, so much. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, uh, I know that uh, you have a TV reality show, but let's kind of go back and establish how you came into all of this i mean now you're in, up in michigan am i correct we we are in michigan okay. yep and uh we, we'll go all the way back at the to the very beginning and tell you how it started james was responsible for that so i'll let him share that with you yeah okay yeah we're from north branch michigan so we we're in the thumb we're from michigan so we always put up our hand when we show everybody where we live so we're in the thumb of michigan we're about an hour and a half north of Detroit in North Branch, Michigan, is where we're headquartered and located. Now, is that where you grew up? Yes, yes. yes. We were born and raised in North Branch, and then we went off to uh, college at Rochester Christian University in Rochester, Michigan, and we got our bachelor's degree um, in science with uh, biblical studies majors, and then uh, from college, we Tried to follow the Lord wherever He uh, wherever He took us in the ministry and in the TV. Actually, the places we never thought we would go. So, uh, so I'm so really, I mean, as twins, you just you basically have done the same thing, right? Together, yeah, yeah, <laughs> all, yeah, the, all the way along. So, yeah, so you yeah, grew yeah. up in a Christian home, I take it. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yep, our our parents uh, started taking us to church when we were seven years old, and at seven we accepted. Uh, Christ into our hearts, and that's where our, what we call our hunt for God started. Wonderful. And so, what's it like? I mean, what's it like to be doing a program together? Uh, well, you know, a lot of people ask us that, and um, I, I've always enjoyed having someone, you know, growing up, we've done everything together. It's been a good thing. Um, there's a lot of competition, which which helps you out, but a lot of people don't get to experience what it's like to be a twin. This is a very unique relationship, and um, a lot of people don't get to experience. I feel blessed to be able to experience. Obviously, there's times where when you spend as much time together as we do, um, you get a little irritated with each other. <laughs> but uh, we've learned we've learned over the years how to navigate that. That's a very small in, uh, inconvenience for us. We we love uh, being twins and. Um, Obviously, our show is called Twin Factor, partly because we're twins, and uh, so we we've always loved doing everything together. That's my opinion. I mean, hopefully, James has the same one because yeah, we yeah. got to work together every day. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the, one of the other things that we think is 
just awesome and that we're blessed for is um, growing up being twins. God actually gave us a twin message through being twins. It's uh, and that that's the same reason why we came up with the name of our show. But in Genesis one twenty six. God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky. So God actually said, let us make man in our image. God was saying, let's make a twin to us. Let's make a twin. So we tell everybody all the time when we travel around the country and speak and everybody we talk to, we say, we're not just twins. You're a twin too. Everybody who is created by God is a twin. Mm-hmm. It says in the Bible, he said, let us make man in our image. Chad and I are made in each other's image and God made all of us. His his uh, his creation, uh, twin to him and his son. Yes. Yep, and his son and his son Jesus. Amen. Well, yeah. do you have other siblings? Yes, we have a sister. She's uh, her name's Brandy, and she's four years younger than us. So you can just imagine how it was for her growing up with our <laughs> older twin brothers. <laughs> oh my! Well, um, tell tell us how. How did all of this start? Like the the hunting hunting the truth ministries. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, so growing up from the time we were seven, our life consisted of God and hunting and sports. And then uh, when we when we got into college, I uh, we graduated in in 2004 from college, and that was God gave me the vision for hunting the truth in the fall of 2004. I was actually deer hunting. I was up in the tree stand, and I was praying at that time. I was asking God to show uh, me what His plan was for my life. I was I was pretty busy hunting for my own plan, and uh, it just wasn't working out. We all know what the Bible says. A man plans his ways in his heart, but the Lord orders his steps. And I had I had been hunting for my own plan, and I got frustrated. It just wasn't working out. And that's what happens when we don't hunt for God and his plan. When we hunt for our own plan, we get frustrated. I'm sure everybody does. And so I was asking God, what's your plan for my life? And as I prayed that night, I heard God share with me in my spirit. He said, I want you to hunt for me like you hunt for these deer. And I want you to teach my people to do the same. And when I heard that, when I heard him tell me that in my spirit, I knew exactly what he was talking about because I grew up hunting. Chad and I have a love and a passion, a deep love for hunting. And so when when I heard that, I thought, I know what he's talking about. God wants me to hunt for him just just as hard as I hunt for those deer. I, I love deer hunting. I have a passion and God wants us to love him just like that. And, um, you know, the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that's what God was telling me. He was saying, love me with all your heart and teach my people how to do the same. And so uh, I went home that night and I was reading in the Word. I like to get um, scriptures to kind of confirm what I'm hearing from God. I was reading in the Word and I came to a verse in Psalms, chapter 14, verse 2, and it says that God looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand or any who seek God. And just from studying the Bible with us being pastors, I uh, I knew that the word seek and the word hunt had the same definition, which is to pursue with yes. force or to search for. And so Chad and I, being diehard hunters our whole life, we put that word um, hunt in that verse for the word seek. And it says that God looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand or any who hunt for God. And I thought, there it is. There's a verse. God's God's looking for hunters. He told me he wanted me to hunt for him. God's looking for hunters, and he wants everybody to hunt for him. And then I was uh, also reading in John, um, and uh, John chapter 14, and in that in that chapter, um, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's telling them, "I'm going to be leaving you here pretty soon, but where I'm going, you know the way." And one of his disciples said, "No, Lord, we don't know the way. What is the way?" And in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So I said, you know what? We're hunting the truth. We're hunting the truth ministries. We're hunting Jesus with all our heart. So yeah. I called Chad and I said, uh, Chad, I think God wants us to start a hunting ministry. And it comes from John 14, 6, and it's called Hunting the Truth. And I believe that he wants us to hunt for him with all our heart. And I believe he wants us to spend the rest of our days on this earth teaching his people to do the same thing. So so what we did was um, for a couple weeks following that, I wrote down, I went home and I wrote down just on a piece of paper an outline of all the different ways that Chad and I are, is, are successful in harvesting deer. And we call it secrets to harvesting deer. And I wrote those eight secrets down. I kind of wrote the hunting side of the secrets, and then I passed it along to Chad. And Chad 
um, wrote the spiritual application side of those eight secrets. And we've uh, got had us form a book and we got it published and it's called Secrets of the Hunt. And the secrets of the hunt are the eight ways, the eight secrets that a deer hunter can be successful in harvesting deer. But it's also the eight secrets on how us Christians can be successful on hunting God and finding his plan for our life. So um, our book was published in 2008, Secrets of the Hunt. And that's about uh, right around when we started traveling and speaking. We were we started to get phone calls to speak at blogging dinners and youth events and Sunday morning uh, camel church services. And so from 2008 until now, we've been traveling and speaking and trying to follow God and share his message and give him all the glory. So is this a full-time ministry for you too? Or do you have another method of... of uh, pro- uh, Financially, <laughs> yeah, providing yeah, for your yeah. family. So, yeah, so so it's it's funny you ask that question. Um, I've uh, I've been a production supervisor um, for the last twelve years at a company called Velastic. You probably you probably eat our pickles, but um, I've been a supervisor, production supervisor for the last twelve years. And Chad Chad's been a manager at a recycling company too for for several years. So. Up until um, now, we've had full-time jobs, we've had families, you know, we've had a ministry and our TV show. We've been doing it all, all together, all at once. And in, in, uh, I think in a, probably in about a month, we're going to go full-time in the ministry and TV wow. fight. So, yeah. One, one thing that James didn't mention, too, in, in all of that, we've, we've been in church planting. We planted our first church in 2006. James and I have uh, planted or replanted four different churches since 2006. So in the midst of all that, we've also been church planters and been pastors in ministry for yeah. over 25 years now. So it's kind of been a, wow. a big, um, you know, put it all together type of thing. <laughs> and uh, try just with the goal of everything, just trying to reach people for Jesus through the avenues of hunting and the outdoors and whatever we do as a pastor in ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um when I shared the scripture that you had given us in John, John chapter 14, and it was like, well, so what does this have to do with hunting? (laughs) And, um, you know, so yeah, you're describing a lot of that. And tell us a little bit about the, the twin factor program. The twin factor, obviously it's, it's called twin factor as James described before. It's because, uh, we're twins and it was con- we really had a confirmation through Genesis 126 when we first started the show. But it, it features our our relationship as twins, uh, the unique relationship, the funny, goofy part of of us. And it also features hunting, obviously, because that's part of our ministry. But our show is a reality show, and most importantly, it features what we do to what we call "Be the Factor" in people's lives. Our tagline for Twin Factor is called "Be the Factor." And factor means to have the impact on the outcome of something. So we wanted to create a reality show that's kind of, we call it like a lifestyle reality show that just kind of follows everything we do in ministry, most importantly in ministry, to be the factor in people's lives. And so as James described, how we be the factor, how we try to be the factor and have an impact on other people's lives for Jesus is through Hunt the Truth Ministries. Um, Hunt the Truth also, we have a local uh, ministry. We minister to people in wheelchairs, men and women in wheelchairs, physically challenged people, and then also fatherless youth. That's also something that we do in Hunt the Truth. We've done it locally and we do it nationally. Um, one of the things that uh, that we've had a blessing to do is back in 2015, when we first started the show, we got a call from someone from the United States Army at Fort Benning in Georgia. And uh, they asked us to team up with them and create the first gold star hunt for the youth that lost their fathers on active duty. And so we teamed up with them and created the first gold star hunt. We did that for five years in a row. And um, we're still in discussions with some people down there on, on trying to expand that. And so th- those are the type of things that we do in Hunt and Truth Ministry to try to beat effect in people's lives. And, and also with the book, with Secrets of the Hunt, uh, we do seminars on our book to teach people in depth on how to hunt God and his plan for their life through those eight secrets and, and also speak at hunting and outdoor events, wild game dinner, sportsman's banquets, men, men's ministry events, youth events, public and private school events. We've, we've spoken at all those different events and those are the basic ways that we try to be the factor, but our show twin factor features all of that. 
we try to put a mix of everything in there just to show people how we as twins are trying to be the factor and be twin factor. And it's not all serious, is it? Oh, no. <laughs> hey, yeah, you see our promos. We're, well, one of the things that we were told back in 2015 when we first started, um, we were on the Pursuit Channel our first couple of years, and one of the things that people told us when we when we first started producing our show was, don't be fake. People don't want to be, don't, they don't want to see fake people. Yeah. They want to see real, pay, real people. And James and I kind of looked at him and said, I don't know if people really want that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're outdoorsmen and we're, we're kind of goofy and funny. And, and they said, no, just, just be real. People want to be real. They relate with real. So that's what we try to do. We don't try yeah. to be fake. We try to be ourselves no matter what that looks like. You know, sometimes people will laugh or some people are kind of surprised that <laughs> at some of the, the comedy we have, but we, we've learned traveling and speaking and talking to people who watch our show that they actually enjoy seeing the real part of us. They can relate to that. Absolutely. And that's what the biggest thing we want to do is we want to create a connection with the audience and with the viewers first. Yeah. And that's very important because then they'll, then they will be open to hearing what your message is. And so, and, and, and obviously James and I too, before, you know, our, our hunting show, a lot of people like to watch, you go out and shoot huge animals and, and we're, you know, that's not the most important thing to us, you know, and a lot of hunters out there, that's exactly how it is. A lot of people can't go out and shoot these huge animals and travel all over the world. They're, they're just a lot like us. They just, they just go out and hunt because they love it and they enjoy it and they they feed it, they harvest it to to, um, feed their families, which by the way, that's, that's one of the main reasons we tell people that too. Uh, We have, we get, asked some very interesting questions about the hunting side of it. You know, obviously we're going out and um, and we're harvesting animals. We call it harvest. We don't call it kill. We call it harvest animals. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons why we do that. God's given us those animals to to uh, provide for us. And also right. those animals have to be managed. You know, there's so many animals so, out especially in our area. So you know, let's, they can let's stop managed. right there for a second, okay? Uh, because I want to go to a message to let our viewers know um, that we have prayer for them. So we'll be right back with you guys in just a moment. And for those of you viewing, I want to say thank you for viewing. Thank you for being a part of KCHF TV 11. And uh, we have the prayer line open. If you need prayer today, then give us a call. We've got wonderful prayer partners that They love to pray and they want to pray with you. So if you feel like you're all alone out there, that there's nobody that really understands or maybe nobody that cares, please give us a call. It's important to us because we love you. And um, thank you again for just joining us. Oh, and the number for the prayer line, 505-345-4165. So give us a call and we'll be right back with Chad and James Hampton right after this. In 2004, I was sitting in my tree stand in a small town in Michigan called Mayville and I was actually bow hunting. At that time in my life, um, I had been praying to God because life hadn't turned out the way I thought it should. I had a job I didn't like. My wife was just recovering from cancer. I asked God a question, probably a question that a lot of people ask God. I said, Lord, I'm at the end of my rope. I have no idea what you want for my life. What is your purpose and what is your plan for my life? And I really didn't expect an answer, but as I prayed, I felt God share with me my spirit. He said, I want you to hunt for me like you hunt for these deer. And I want you to teach my people to do the same. And I said, hmm, I'm hunting for God. God told me to hunt for him, and so I'm going to hunt the truth. We uh, were approached with an idea from someone about Twin Factor TV. You know, they pitched the idea to us that there really isn't a set of twins in the outdoor industry that has a show, and that would be a really cool idea. So we prayed about it and thought about it, and uh, as we prayed, we came across some verses in the Bible, Genesis 1, 26 being part, one of them that talks about us being made in God's image and likeness. In that verse, God says, let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky. And that verse says, uh, God said, let us make 
A twin to us. We tell everybody, we're not just twins, we're all made in the image of God. We're all twins with Jesus, and he's given all of us a plan to impact other people's lives. Be the factor. Well, we're back with Chad and James Hampton with um, Twin Factor, Hunt, Hunt and the Truth Ministries. And, uh, you know, as we uh, were talking a little bit earlier about when you were told, just be real, uh, don't try to be something you're not or someone you're not. And I have to say that as I was reviewing some of the shorts of your program, I thought, okay, this reminds me of my family. And I thought, I bet that's how they appeared to so many others because, you know, the cutting up, the teasing each other, playing practical jokes and, and but, you know, but the, also the seriousness of the hunt mm -hmm. and, yeah. and being out there. And so to be able to, to take all of that, to capture it uh, is, is something very special. And uh, to be able to show people that that's God's heart. I yes. mean, he, he is the great hunter. Yes, he is. Yes, yes you, that's what the Bible says. Correct. The Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. And yeah. we all know that the seek means hunt. So Jesus came to hunt for and to save the lost, which, yes, that's the most important thing. Yes. He's the best, greatest hunter who ever lived. He's hunting after us. Yes. <laughs> so tell us, what is the best prank that you ever played on your brother? <laughs> oh man, that's that's a that's a good one. There was um, I, I I remember I can tell you my favorite one. We were actually deer hunting one time, and that we had some property down in Michigan. And I went up to the truck first as we were uh, getting ready to leave the property. And I told my friend, I said, um, I'm going to go up first. And, and there was a cornfield that you had to walk by all the way up to the truck. And I said, I'm going to go up into that cornfield and when you guys are walking up i'm going to run through that cornfield like i'm some type of animal and make a bunch of noise and when i get there i'm going to start screaming and see if i can if i can scare james and to have him think that i was a some type of an animal and, and that's exactly what happened i went to the cornfield and when they got close i i just started running through the cornfield and knocking down corn stalks and when i got to the end i jumped out and screamed and it it, it really scared him so that that's probably the that was the funniest prank i think i ever played on you in the woods but. yeah yeah, so I think mine is, um, I actually have a couple, but I, I, I don't want to share one of them, but I'll, I'll share this one, so um, it's not for TV. Yeah, it's not for TV, but uh, growing up um, as twins, we, we always wanted to switch classes and see if our teacher would notice, the, all from, from when we were young all the way up until high school. We always wanted to do that, but we were a little bit scared because we, we didn't want to get in trouble. So finally, when we were seniors in high school, the last week of school, our very last week ever of school, we thought, you know what? Why don't we just try this? We, what are they going to do? Kick us out? <laughs> you know, like, like, are they? Are, are we going to get in trouble? So, and, it, and it's funny because um, I was uh, Chad had a gym class and I had a I was in chemistry, and so we decided we were going to switch. But what I didn't tell Chad is I had a test that day, in in class, and so and I knew that. So, so we decided to uh, switch classes, and I knew I had a test, and I wanted him to take my test. I didn't want to take it, so which it ended up hurting me because I got a bad grade, obviously. But so, so we we ended up switching classes, and then when we got done, we met each other in the hall, and he, and he had a really you know strange look on his face. He said, "Did you know you had a test today?" <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, I, I got it." And he goes, "Well." Yeah, I just gotta let you know you didn't get good, a good grade. And we just we just cracked him up. But that was uh, I had a I had a really fun time making him take one of my tests. Well, the the other interesting part of that story is that the class that we switched, our pastor's wife was the teacher in one of the classes, <laughs> and she she did not even realize that we had switched classes. Oh that no! Time. Yeah, yeah, that was probably the most interesting prank we played. That's too funny. Well, you know, being spontaneous and. Um, Especially, you know, when the when the cameras are rolling and things happen, and I'm sure, like out in the woods and and back at the cabin or wherever you are, that that things happen and you just have to roll with it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So what? From day one, uh, we we produce our own show. We have a, a production company called Twins Media. So we we've, we've always produced our own show. And one of the benefits of that is uh, our field producers, the people that we take with us that run the cameras. 
we we told them from from the minute we arrive somewhere or even on the way there until the end of the trip, always have the cameras running because we're trying to capture those natural, funny, you know, things that just happen naturally. The we found out that a lot of the times those those times happen when you're not even really expecting it or when you're not really looking for it. And so we always told our field field producers, we always said, just keep the camera running all the time because these natural funny parts of James and I's relationship and, you know, just, just things that happen. Uh, it's, it, it's happening all the time. Our show is not scripted at all. It's a reality show, but it's a lifestyle reality show yeah. that the cameras are just running and they just catch, catch us being ourselves. And that's, that's, a, you know, one of the best parts of the show. You know, I'm thinking of the, the word, um, it's, in, it's in Nehemiah. It's like eat the fat, drink the sweet. And, um, and, and it's just because the, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. And obviously there's a lot of joy in, in the process of what you do. And, yes. and, it, and it shows strength because you're not afraid to be yourself. Yes. Not only with the hunting and the playful aspect of it, but you know, I mean, this walk is wonderful and it can be funny. And, yes. and so, you know, we, and sometimes we just have to laugh at ourselves yes. in, in the midst right. of it. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. We, we actually produced an episode and um, it, it'll be coming out in the future. It's called Laughter is Good Like a Medicine. And it's exactly what you're talking about. You know, those, those times in life, uh, man, the Bible says it. laughter is, is good like a medicine. It, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And, and I mean, one of the things that we always tell people too is, like you said, life, life is, sometimes it can be tough. Mm -hmm. It can be really tough. And, and that's why it's even more important to have the joy of your Lord to be your strength and to sometimes just laugh it off. And, and because life can be tough and it, that's real. Good everybody goes through that and uh that's that's why we're so thankful to have the lord in our life because he the joy of the lord is our strength but that's one of the reasons why we try to feature we had a whole episode a whole episode that just featured the funny parts of twin factor and it was called laughter is good like a medicine we we try to try to give the viewers a uh, a reason to laugh for at least then you know 28 and a half minutes <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the scripture that, that um, we shared in the opening, which was in John 14, and I, I went to the Passion Translation to see exactly how it, it sounded there. And it, and it said, Yeshua explained, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes next to the Father except through union with me. Mm -hmm. To know me is to know my Father too. And I, I love that because then it kind of led me to look into some things. And in Hebrew, the word radaf, which is basically um, to hunt, but it means to follow after, to pursue eagerly, and to be continuous. Yes, yes. that's great. Yes, that's I good. love that. Yes, so it was like, yeah. So that, you know, when, when you shared that part about when the Lord told you, I want you to hunt for me like you hunt for these deer. Yes. And to take yeah. it yeah. to so, the people. Yeah. So one of the things that we say when we go out and speak is we, we right away have people, we say, if you're a hunter, raise your hand. And some people will raise their hand. And then we always have, I mean, most of the time we'll have people that are hunters and we say, if you're not a hunter, raise your hand. And so they will. And then we tell everybody, all of us are hunters. You might not be hunting animals, but all of us are hunting. We're all, we're all searching something. We're all seeking after something. And um, I, I loved what you said, because what we try to do is we try to get everybody to see we're, we're all hunters in some way. And um, that's that's how we start out our Secrets of the Hunt book, too, is that, you know, the word seek and the word hunt have the same meaning. And we're all seeking. And then we always end our our messages at events. And we say and we ask the question, what are you truly hunting for? Are you, are you hunting for things in your life that mm -hmm. that are? Uh, temporary and do not last or are you hunting for the things that are eternal in your life like you said the the union the relationship with god hunting god with all of your heart that's where that's the source of everything that we have that's the reason why we we're created is to have a relationship with god that's why he created us to have a relationship with him so we always ask people to um just think and 
and you know to think about what are you truly hunting for in your life. Right. Yes. One of our one of our favorite characters in the Bible is Solomon, and if uh, I'm sure a lot of people have read about Solomon in Ecclesiastes, he says in the first chapter of Ecclesiastes, he said, I, he basically said, I went on a search or a hunt to see what was good for a man to do under the sun. And it, it goes on, Solomon goes on to talk about how he held nothing back for himself. He had everything that anybody ever, ever wanted. He had more money, more power, more fame. He had uh, 700 wives, you know, in the, in the gold that he um, obtained every single year. In today's money, it would be $1 billion a year. That's how much money, gold that he received every single year. Wow. Yeah, and, and he said, I planted vineyards. And I, I, he said, I held nothing back and I had every, anything that anybody ever wanted. And he said this in Ecclesiastes. And then I think it's chapter two, chapter one or chapter two. He says, the first time he says, I experienced that. And it was all meaningless, meaningless, a chase after the wind. That's exactly what he calls it, a chase after the wind. And Chad actually has another book that he wrote. It's called A Chase After the Wind. But we'll get into that some other time. But <laughs> but but Solomon says uh, it, it's all a chase after the wind. And then at the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, after he's been through this the, the, the hunt that everybody's ever wanted, at the end, he said, I've come to a conclusion. He said, um, my conclusion is the most important thing is to fear God and obey his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. He said, I went through that, that whole hunt. I experienced every, anything that anybody ever wanted. And my conclusion is that all of that's meaningless. You can't take that to heaven. It doesn't mean anything. The only thing that matters is to fear God and obey his commandments. And we all know that the most important commandment in the Bible is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So, we love Solomon. He's one of our favorite characters because he got it. He got it. Well, Yeshua said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. Yes. And uh, you, you, something you said just a, a little bit before this was um, the scripture in um, 2 Corinthians. I believe it's in chapter 4, but it says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. Mm -hmm. Yes because those things are temporal they're of this world yes and the things that are seen can change in an instant but the things that are not seen are eternal and yes. so the principles uh, of the hunt of the pursuit is what is eternal yes yes That's yes right. the the what we tell people too when we go out and speak is um when we go out and hunt you have to know what you're hunting for or you're not going to be successful. You know, we can go out and we can hunt deer, um, but if you go out and hunt deer like you hunt turkey, you're not going to be successful. You have to know what you're hunting yeah. for in life. Okay? So we say the same thing in the spiritual. We bring it over to the spiritual aspect, and we say the most important thing to start out with is knowing what you're truly hunting for. What's what's God's purpose for your life? You know, what is your purpose? What are you truly hunting for? Uh, because as Solomon showed us, he went through his whole life he was very unfulfilled because he focused his life on those things yeah. that are not that are are temporary. And he, I I think I would probably feel the same way if I look back at my life and realize I spent my entire life just focusing my life on things that aren't going to be here when I pass away. I mean, I'm sure I would have a very negative, maybe unfulfilled um, tone to what I'm saying, like Solomon did in the 12 chapters of Ecclesiastes because I'm sure he looked back and, and saw some regret in his life. And that's one thing that we don't want to do. Uh, we we want to try to uh, focus our life and what we do on the eternal thing, which is really is God's kingdom. You know, when we leave here, there's the two things that we're going to have with us is our relationship with the Lord, if you accepted Christ into your heart, and, and those that are going to be in heaven with us. So that's the That's the kingdom of God, and that's the only eternal thing that we can focus our life on. And we can use the temporary things of life to build the only eternal thing, and that's God's kingdom while we're here on earth. Yes. You know, I think about when you say, um, what have I done with my life? And I hope for myself that I can say, or that people would say, she loved God with all of her heart. Mm, yes. And it was evident. Yes. Uh, that's really all that matters. Yes. And, and it is all that. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, it is. It, it, James, James and I kind of have a, uh, 
we we have a funny joke that we he tells me that I'm a uh, he calls it a fair weather hunter and James <laughs> says that he's a serious hunter. Die hard hunter. He's a die hard hunter. James <laughs> really is. He he's hunted a lot harder than I have in my life. Um, and we kind of have a joke running about that, but you're exactly right. If I get to the end of my life, I want somebody to say to me, you were a diehard hunter for the, for God. Amen. You hunted with all of your heart. And not I, that I wasn't a fair weather hunter. I wasn't, you know, a part-time hunter. I was a, I was a hunter that, that sought after him, that seeked that, you know, that Amen. Uh, sought after him with all of my heart while I was on earth. Yes. And with that, we're going to go and let people pause. Say la think about this. We'll be right back. Uh, we want to let you know again that we have our prayer partners ready and, and eager to hear from you, to pray for you, and to encourage you. 505-345-4165. And I just want to say to those of you that are our supporters, thank you so much. We appreciate your financial gifts to help this go keep going because we are family in the best sense of the word. We'll be right back after this. The hunt, to seek out, to search for, all the hours we spend preparing, practicing, seeking, searching. All for that moment of opportunity, that moment of reward, that moment of harvest. But what will happen when our season is over, when our tags are filled, when our wall is full? when our once vibrant bodies can no longer climb the ladder or pull back the bow or sit for hours in the woods. What if this searching, this seeking, this hunt is just an illustration to prepare us for a greater hunt? What if we were meant to hunt more? In life, there are times when things happen that appear to set us back on the plans we had to be successful only to find out later what God is really doing is setting us up for the success we've been praying for. That is, if we trust Him. This happened to Chad and James Hampton on the Twin Factored episode of Twin Factor TV in Alabama. During the process of purchasing licenses, because of a very unique set of circumstances, James was required to purchase a restricted turkey tag that would only allow him to hunt with another licensed hunter. This meant Chad and James had to hunt together. Disappointed that they could not hunt separate areas for a better chance to harvest turkeys, they had just hoped for a chance to harvest a turkey together and create a memorable and entertaining first episode of Twin Factor TV. After hunting for over two days without a chance to harvest a tom, they headed out to the woods on their last evening to hunt a big Alabama gobbler with the setback still on their minds. They still wondered what could have happened if they could have hunted multiple areas of the property instead of just one. What they didn't know was, God was about to take their setback and use it as a setup, as he often does.
factor, double factor, double factor, baby, hundred to you. Chad and James thought that being forced to hunt together was a setback to their goal of both harvesting gobblers. Little did they know, God was setting them up. They never would have shot two times together if they hadn't been forced to hunt together. God knew what he was doing. What is happening in your life that has the appearance of a setback and looks like it's preventing you from receiving what you are praying for? Look again. God is saying trust him. What looks like your setback just might be what God is using as your setup to receive what you are praying for. God bless and be the factor. Well, welcome back. We're here with Chad and James Hampton and and um, guys, you know, we're we're right at the end of our time together here today. But would you speak into the camera and just um, share your heart with people about what it means to truly become the hunter? Because they have been the, the, the hunter, the great hunter has been hunting them for a long time. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just going to turn you loose and let you speak to our audience. Sure. So um, when when Chad and I go out hunting, we don't just go out in the woods and sit on a log and then wait for a, a deer or an animal to come up to us and then we harvest it and then that's it. That's, it. And that, that's not how it happens. We have to find the animal first. And it, it's the same way with God. God wants us to hunt for him, but he, he wants us to find him first. Before we do anything, we have to find him. And so how does the how does God's word say that we find him in the, in the Old Testament? God told his people, Israel, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Yes. In the in the New Testament, how, what does the Bible say? How can we find God now that we live in the, in the New Testament? We shared a verse earlier in uh, John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man come to the father except through me. That's how we find God. We have a relationship with his son, Jesus. That's how we find God. And Chad and I, we just encourage you today, if you haven't started on your hunt for God, if you haven't found God yet, start a relationship with his son, Jesus. The, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple. That's how you can find God. Start a relationship with his son, Jesus, because Jesus is the greatest hunter that ever lived. He came down in the flesh. He came to earth. He hunted for us. He went all the way to the cross. The Bible says that he was given over to death for the forgiveness of our sins, and he rose again for our justification, which means that justification means that we were declared not guilty because of what Jesus did. Start, start, we encourage you to start a relationship with Jesus. We thank Jesus for what he did on the cross. And it's, it's that simple. Sometimes we make it so hard, but the Bible clearly shows us how to start on our hunt for God and find his purpose for our life, and that's to have a relationship with his son, Jesus. Jesus paid it all, and he did it all. All we have to do is believe that he went to the cross and died for our sins and accept what he did on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and the healing of our diseases. Amen. Amen. And one of my favorite scriptures in the New Testament, too, is where it says, no one comes to Yeshua unless the Father draws them. Yeah, and is. he's drawing. And it's that Father heart that loves us so much. And so if that's you today, I hope that you'll give us a call. And, um, you know, it's just about surrendering to him. So give us a call and uh, say, you know, I just, I just said a prayer. I'm, I, I've told him I want him. I want him to come into my life. And we want to make sure you have a Bible to start you on your way. So call and we've got prayer partners that will pray with you, but also that can help you along this new path. 505-345-4165. Um, as we kind of close out here, tell us a little bit about the the air times and the um, you know when when you're on and and how we can expect to, to yeah. hear about you. Yeah, we'll we'll be starting we'll start airing uh, starting next week. Uh, Twin Factor will be, and but you can also you can keep up with us. Uh, we, we're going to be 
um, posting the episodes on our social media, our YouTube, Rumble channel, and you can keep up with social media on our social media. We'll be we'll be posting a lot of stuff on there too. TwinFactorTV.com is our main website. Uh, you'll be able to watch the episodes on Rumble and YouTube afterwards. But you'll um, yeah, starting next week you'll you'll be able to see us as we start airing, and uh, and hopefully the viewers enjoy what they see and they're impacted as we try to be the factor. Yes. Great. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. And to our audience, pray for them, okay? Yes. Everybody yes. needs prayer. And people in ministry especially, it's the yes. foundation of every ministry. So, so please pray for Chad and for James as they continue to pursue the Lord and to pursue the hunt for those yes. that need to know the truth that will truly make them free. Thank you for joining us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his everlasting peace. Shalom, shalom. Thank you very much. Thank it's you so much. It's a pleasure to be on the network. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. God bless you all. Yes.